welcome back to my channel everyone. It's been a long time but I'm back filming my adventures in and on the water. This time out with my friend Nick, heading out from Sulcombe, South Devon in search of some early season fish with the spear guns. We encounter some challenging conditions but stubbornness pays off. We find some fish and have a cook up on the boat surrounded by stunning scenery. I hope you enjoy the video, stay tuned for a new year of adventures. Welcome to another Joe Piquet adventure. After what has been a very, very long time, we've got Rosie the boat here today, and we're in slightly sunny Kingsbridge. And we're going to head out to sea and just try and get some seafood today. Um, we're going to suit up, head out there. Got the um, couple of spear guns, 75 and a 90 cameras, cool box. We've even got the pop the stove in today, so we might have a cook up out there if we catch something. So, very, very, very excited indeed. I reckon, first of all, we're going to be hunting for visibility rather than fish, to be honest, because um, there has been a lot of rain recently. But hopefully, if we find some visibility, we'll just have a look around for anything. Bass, place, pollock. I'd love to have a little cook up today as well on the water. Nick's whacking the drone up. Hopefully it'll be a lovely day. So if you've watched any of the other videos, you might recognize this area here. Beautiful patch of coastline, which gives way to lovely kelpy boulder fields. And the bass usually arrive here late March, early April. So fingers crossed we bump into a couple because the freeze is empty. I've not had any seafood in quite some time. The sun's out, very, very excited. I think there's some visibility too, but we will see. So I definitely overestimated the visibility here. The water's not too bad, but as you can see, diving down here to the boulders, there's about three meters maximum viz. This film really doesn't do this spot justice. It's just the most beautiful, rich kelp forest uh, when the weather's good and the visibility's there but it will come. We've had some really stormy weather. We've had lots of rain. And as you can still, it's still looking pretty wintry in the water, but just lovely to be diving again. Second dive, I go slightly deeper, get in amongst the kelp and boulders, have a good look around, make a few noises in the back of the throat, looking all around me just in case, because the bass can come from any direction. After doing a couple of espettos with no success, 
I decide to head to a boulder which I know can hold fish at the base in a kind of cave system. If the bass are anywhere, they're bound to be here. Arriving at the bottom, I get my bearings and I very slowly creep towards the end of the boulder where the bass always hang out. Nothing seen though. I decide to swim down current of the boulder and try the other side again, descending down, creeping through the kelp stipes, looking this way and that, looking for that flash of silver or this blue back. Again, no luck here. Possibly it's still a little bit early in the season, it's only early April. Perhaps the colony haven't arrived yet. Still, awesome to get amongst the kelp, familiarise myself with this terrain. I know it so well, I can't wait for the bass to move in. Had a good look around, but still feels very wintry in the water. The kelp's quite smashed up and uh, it's grey. The visibility is pretty short. So it's going to be Potentially a bit of a struggle to spear today, um, but we'll keep trying. You never know, conditions out of the water there, absolutely lovely. We'll head on round the coast, Try, a, I think we'll try a pinnacle next. Um, the visibility will be low, but hopefully the fish could be hunting there. So, second mark of the day is a pinnacle. Top's about 9 metres and the bottom is 15 and again this can hold some good fish in the early season but uh, yeah, I'm definitely just going to take the 75 because the visibility is pretty low which gives me a bit more manoeuvrability. Um, yeah, we'll see how we do. Report back shortly. Jumping in the water at this second spot you can see the visibility is no better at all. But the one thing in our favour here is the tide. The water's slacked right off, which means I can really precisely dive to the base of the pinnacle, where the pollock tend to be just up current. I land absolutely perfectly, descending into the boulders and broken kelp. Take a position here, looking around me for anything that might come through the gloom. Game over. You can see as I ascend here, you can see the pinnacle in front of me looming out of the murk. Perfect position to be to find these pollock. I decide to repeat the same dive, trying to land in roughly the same spot as the fish are clearly there few fish that size and have a great meal for the family and also some fish to cook up on the boat later. Again, getting amongst this rough ground, really rough boulders, kelp, cracks. This is where the pollock love to hang out. Once again, one emerges pretty quickly, just head into the tide and bang pinned him straight through the head, stone shot. Lovely diving, lovely way to start the uh, kick off the season. Just really stretch the lungs out. New fish as well. So yeah, 
they're all about the same size that it's catching, but uh, you are literally shooting its shadows because the visibility is maybe three meters and the water is so green, these fish blend in absolutely perfectly with the green water. So you're just kind of, and by the time you're close enough to see them, they usually spot you. So they were often darting away at the last minute. So, but yeah, really happy to have some fish and uh, we'll definitely cook one of these up for lunch. It'll be delicious. Another one of my favorite areas. Love lobster hunting here. So we'll have a look. It's a very low tide, which is perfect for looking for lobsters, low tide. I'm gonna drop the anchor in here. Have a look around. So a couple of tips to think about when lobstering. Um, a hook is a fantastic idea. It needs to be a decent length. So these ones are about 70 centimeters long, which is about perfect. So you can reach into the back of crevices. And I always put the hook on the end of my float line. So if I do drop it, I can always find it afterwards and your floats above you uh, for safety. And um, Low tide, around low tide, low tide is a really good time to go because often you can see the potential lobster holes from the surface, the gullies and crevices. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a, a look around and then we'll have to decide if we catch a lobster or if to cook up a lobster or a pollock for, for tea later. So we've also got a torch looking in the back of the crevices. We've got the, uh, the old orca torch. So we'll have a good look around for an hour or so. Um, Nick's not going to get out of the water till he's got a lobster, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so it's amazing how just moving a couple of miles down the coast, how much better the visibility is here at this spot. It's opened up to about five, possibly six meters. Good to see an early spider crab though, moving in on the reef. Nice young male. In a few weeks time, this reef will be absolutely infested with spiders. You can see some remnants of recent storms. Kelp stipes which have been uprooted and pushed into this gully. Nice crack here that could have a lobster or crab in. But it actually seems quite quiet on the whole. I see a familiar looking slab on the seabed, which I've visited before. If anywhere is going to have a lobster, this will. I descend down, get my head right under the crack, deploy the torch, and lo and behold, there's a lobster right in the middle, his tail wedged back in a hole. I decide to have a go of the old hook. You can see where Nick's been pushing the hook down around the back of the, the boulders to try and tease him out, but he was not coming out of this uh, out of the slab. He was using the cover. I try to hoik him out and push him back to his exit hole where Nick's waiting to grab him. Managed to hook him out the hole, give him a good old push still unwilling to uh, to leave for his exit and he outwits us again. Great bit of cat and mouse with this lobster, so much fun. Lovely, lovely hours bimble around the rocks, straight into a lobster, but he was really crafty. Um, Nick had a go. He, <laughs> well, what did he do? He just kept, kept his distance really in the middle of a big slab. So we thought we'll leave him, leave him for next time. He, wasn't that big, he was probably on the limit anyway, but yeah, an hour ready for some food really, ready for a cook up. So we're gonna start heading back, probably gonna go to the estuary and find a nice beach 
get the stove out, get some wraps on the go and some lettuce, tomatoes, fry some fish. And it's so nice to be filleting uh, fresh fish again. I've not been in the water for a long, long time. Uh, Spearfishing, we've had an incredibly rough winter, so it's been uh, just a bit of scalloping, a bit of lobstering now and again. This is a uh, this is very exciting. So we took the smallest pollock, we filleted it, skinned it, taken out the pin bones. So we'll fry them. Going to put them in the wrap with tomatoes, with maybe some avocado and some sauce, a bit of lettuce. It'll be so good. What a lovely day. goes, he dives. And what breath hold he's got. Good mate. Pretty good. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks so much for watching and I always appreciate it if you leave a like and a comment for me and yeah, look forward to having the next adventure, filming it, sharing the video with you and uh, yeah, stay tuned because more videos to come. <laughs>